we went to uh, Tijuana, Mexico, mm -hmm. you know, and we, we, we thought it'd be fun, you know, to go to this show. Everyone's got to check out one of these shows. And, you know, it's, it's a woman <sighs> and a horse. We get there and, you know, we think it's going to be awesome. And it is not as cool as it sounds like it would be, man. It is, it's, it's kind of gross. Yeah. If you think a woman <sighs> and a horse and you get there and it's, it's a woman <sighs> and a horse. Yeah. It was really giving it to her. And you know what? To be honest, I felt bad for her. We all just felt bad for her. Yeah. Kind of felt bad for the horse. When in the booth, the booth. This is all I do when in the booth, the booth. A set of headphones, one microphone, and yo, hold the phone. I'm in the booth, the booth. I share my world when in the booth, the booth. This is all I do when in the booth, the booth. I got one microphone, flow glitz in the soul. Yeah, I'm the booth. Me up, box me in. I don't care, box me in. Cause the booth got me in this brand new zone. Plug me in, turn it up. Blitz gon' burn it up. Might start melting down the soundproof phone. One way, so it's one mode. Oh. Booth on the bus whenever I'm on the road. Oh. Lock in for days and anything goes. It's been seven days, the same clothes. Still flowing for the dudes sitting outside on the blocks in the booth, but I'm spitting outside of the box. I know where the digits at, where the lyrics at. I ain't never losing, so I ain't gotta get it back. I got commercial music, but I still know how to spit the rap. I'm like the trees on my boots, I grew from the roots. If I'm lying, I'm flying, but I'm the truth. Only one way, my mobile or roam. I'm underground in the booth. The booth. I share my world when in the booth. The booth. This is all I do when in the booth. The booth. I got a set of headphones and one microphone. And yo, hold the phone, I'm in the booth. The booth. I share my world when in the booth. The booth. This is all I do when in the booth. The booth. I got one microphone. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the zone. Yeah. Yeah. Was he African? African. African. No. He was American and he was like you. He yeah. looked just like you. He was Jewish. Just Wait, like okay. him. Jew. Okay. It's an odd crime for a Jew to yeah, kill. Yeah, I'm pretty docile. Okay, so we have an African Jew wearing a hoodie. No, you don't. No. no, that's not what I said. Is that what you heard me say? I said he looked like you. Do you look like an African Jew? No, I look like a cop. Yeah. <sighs> he was Caucasian. All right, your boy, this is one broadcasting live from the City of Champions. You are listening to The Booth. It is May 12th, 2020. Real quick, before we get this story out there... And um, you got to be safe, people. Over by the Manning Towers, we've got a big, humongous sinkhole. A dump truck has fell into the main roadway. The main roadway has collapsed. So please avoid that area around Manning Tower. I just actually shared the breaking story uh, from the Brockton Enterprise Facebook page. So if you're in the area of the Manning Tower, please, please avoid that area. There is a humongous sinkhole that a dump truck has fell into. I can tell you right now, the truck is in the hole. It, whatever it had in it or if it was loaded, that's going to be offloaded before they even attempt to pull the truck out. Once the truck is pulled out, they're going to have to inspect any gas lines or water lines or anything that's in that hole or in that area um, to make sure it's safe. So I would say avoid that area for the rest of the day. I'm just letting you know, speaking from somebody who knows a little bit about this type of stuff, again, Avoid that area for the rest of the day. Um, I've got my first guest on with me, but I got to give a big thanks to my boys, Ken Diesel, R Squared, and Brockton Mayor Robert Sullivan for coming on the show last week. But tonight, real, real special guest in the show. Man, Emmy Award winning Newbie Rateau from Newbie Productions of the film Protect, Serve, and Care. Let them know you in the house, Newbie. Keith, man, appreciate you letting me come on, brother, man. We go way back, man. Uh, we, had some, we had some good times, you know, back at the old radio station, man, just doing all all types of work. So I appreciate you, brother. I uh, appreciate everyone coming out and, and listening to the podcast. And thanks for having me on. Yeah, man, we go back all the way. XBR, BET, Brockton Cable Access. I remember I first, I actually first know this newbie. I was watching Brockton Cable Access, and it was him and two other guys, and they had this stepping up big time. And and very original. How long did that show go? Can you just give them a little history about the show and how you actually got started out here in this Brockton radio and cable access? It's crazy. So we started a sports show, 
and the, the sports show is basically it was um you know it was, it was it was what we do during the lunchroom and arguing. You know, I started the show when I was 15 years old, and I always say the best way I can explain the show is first take before first take. It was undisputed before undisputed. You know, it was just classic sports talk arguing. At the time, like, oh, you know, I'm going to just sit there on TV arguing with people. And what do you see on ESPN now? Just everyone just sitting down <laughs> arguing, get up, undisputed. I mean, literally undisputed, speak for yourself. Yeah, PTI. Every PTI. show is arguing. PTI. I was mean, that's we were doing that way before them. <laughs> so I was just me and my boy just talking about sports, man. You know, we just, you know, we we're passionate about it. We did it for five years. We did, uh, like, I think we did like, about 60 episodes. We had some fun doing it. You know, we had, we had a, we saw us go to the Kevin Falk charity softball mm-hmm. game. I know you were there, you know, with yeah. you, you know, we interviewed some athletes, you know, Wolf Fork and, you know, I had Jim Rice on stepping up. Uh, so it was cool, you know, but most of the time just sitting down at the table and talking sports, man, you know, so that's what kind of got me started. Yeah. And I remember the first, I believe the first episode I saw you except the big time was when the Celtics was going against the champion, it was going to the championship that year. Um, and they had the beat LA, the beat LA shirts, everybody. And you were like real, you were like real critical of the Celtics that year. You was, you was taking some heat that year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I've always said, listen, I've been a Kevin Garnett guy, but my, I was the hardest crit- critic on Garnett because I said, listen, this dude was seven feet, six eleven. He needs to be aggressive and go into the block. He was too busy shooting those jump shots. I mean, your KG should be giving you 40 points a game in his prime. You know, he was unstoppable. So I was hard on KG, but hey, listen, they won the championship, so he proved me wrong. But I've always thought KG was a was a bigger Tracy McGrady. And it's you know his career high? Kevin Garnett's career high was only forty two points. Can you believe that? Mm. Mm. Career high he was he actually scored against Boston. And he was a great addition for us too. You know, you can't you can't knock that move by Danny Ainge to get those guys here. You know, people were a little critical of it, but it worked out. They were able to bring a chip here, and um, I was real happy, you know, so real happy at this. So let me get into the topics for tonight, right. and we get, get into what we're going to talk about. Local national news booth, um, 19 Iranian naval personnel are dead, 15 more injured after the warship Conrad was struck by Iran's own missile during Jazz Port in southern Iran. This was during a training exercise. And this is coming off of about four months ago. They shot one of their own uh, Iraq's planes down in a, fi- in a civilian fire incident. And um, what that was was that the plane didn't have the proper transponder in it, so they would know it was a civilian airline. So, uh, you know, prayers going out to those lost over there. It's an accident. I know we're not too friendly with Iran and Iraq, but again, it's, it's a terrible, horrible accident. Um, real quick, la- local national news also. Researchers in 2018 <laughs> found a one million year spider. One million years old, it was a spider <laughs> with a scorpion tail encapsulated in a lump of amber. And they released a photo this week, which they had found from two years ago. But this photo of this spider encased in this amber was the most scariest picture that I think was all over the Internet this week. And if you guys don't remember why this is significant, if you remember the movie Jurassic Park, that was how they extracted the dinosaur DNA because... They took these mosquitoes that would have bit dinosaurs and they extracted the DNA and then they replaced the strands with frog and 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 um, I forget what other reptile it was that they replaced into the DNA stream. And that was how they were able to replicate the dinosaurs. I can tell you right now, speaking from my son, Terrell, he does not want anybody replicating a spider with a scorpion tail. Newbie, what about you? Like, you a fan of spiders or you... Just leave it alone. Listen, I'm not afraid of spiders. Don't do it for me, man. I, I'm not afraid of spiders at all. I mean, you have friends that freak out over spiders, but we need them. I mean, we need spiders. I'm all for it. Like, all right, listen, I ain't. Well, I want to call up on me in the bed, but you know, if I see one, I ain't gonna jump on. I, I ain't gonna jump on people about it. It is what it is. <laughs> he said, I don't "You know what? I am scared of though. I, listen, I am scared of cats though. I'm terrified what? of cats. Really? That's what I say. It'll be a." There could be a pit bull over here. I'm good. A cat, I literally cannot be in the room. Literally. <laughs> I got oh, some man. stories I'll tell you. I got some stories I got to tell you off here, man, about cats, man. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say man, I'll tell you what, one day, man, listen, man. One day, this girl invited me to stay over. Cool. Uh-huh. I'm like, all right, cool, it's on. She had a cat. I'm like, man, I can't do it. <laughs> bad, too bad, girl. 
couldn't do it, man. <laughs> you got me. I'm gonna. I'm a black out here. I'm laughing so hard. What's up, Dominic Pappas? I see you out here in the chat. Frank Zanowski, Tyler Zanowski, Viana Marie, all out here in the chat. We're actually broadcasting live. I'm testing restream tonight, so restream is going out over uh, IG, Twitter, and and my personal Facebook page. Uh, we're going to be working with BMG Records to expand this broad range of restream. Um, continuing on, New York update: Five children have now died of this weird disease that's connected to COVID-19. It's the Kawasaki disease. So we want to definitely keep an eye on that. But the reason why I've got Newbie Raton here and we're getting into the legal booth is because of this little incident that we've had down in Georgia. So before I get into it, the one thing I do want to mention is last week's show, we had been talking about, you know, this whole double standard and things like that and how this incident in Georgia with Ahmad Arbery was shot uh, by these two men, the, the, the McMichaels, um, had put this eye on the double standard that we were debating two weeks for two weeks about this incident in Michigan where they were open law carry, they brought their guns to the protests and all this stuff. And Representative Sarah Anthony, a Democrat, she's a, you know, her district's in that capital city of Lansing. She actually brought a security detail to her place of employment where they had this protest in Michigan. To kind of flex. She was kind of flexing. You know, she brought all these guys with her with the guns. It was about maybe eight or nine guys. But I felt like it's, again, we're, we're, we're flipping that double standard again. I get it, you know. But I feel like if she was really felt like her life was threatened, she could have gotten a state police trooper and brought them to work. But I get it. I understand what she was trying to do, the point that she was trying to make. I just don't think that it, I just think two wrongs don't make a right. And thankfully, right. God forbid, there were no protesters there that day to escalate the situation. Uh, because there were, you know, certain types of people in that protesting group. I don't know if you were familiar with the story of her and if you want to give your thoughts on it. Well, I mean, just of the protesting in general, I mean, um, you know, I, I, it, it's hard to tell someone who owns a barbershop, hair salon, that they can't go to work. I mean, I'm, I'm, I empathize with that. I really do. But mm -hmm. on the other side, you know, you got to do it responsibly. You, you know, you got to channel your anger to the right person or to the right thing. So, you know, go on and protest and have your guns and everything like that. You know, I, I think uh, I understand the frustration. This got to be channeled in the right place. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, it's like right now, you know, down in North Carolina, the protesters showed up the subway and one of the protesters showed up with an RPG. And it's like, come on now. You doing you look you you forcing it you doing a little too much as a protester right now. There's no need to bring an RPG in the subway flex and show your your con constitutional right there's no reason for that you put everybody at risk and you're lucky that jack bauer wasn't around from 24 because you definitely right. thought he was a terrorist and taking you down <laughs> i mean i went to the rally um you know i was doing some filming i went to the rally in massachusetts right in the state house i think it was the last it was yes. sometime last week i, mean, I forgot last what day it was week, but yeah yeah, you know, you know, I was running by, you know, the law conservatives there, you know, big conservative, uh, Jeff Kuhn was there. And listen, I mean, there were some, you know, there were some things I saw that were uncomfortable, you know, um, you know, some shirts I saw that uncomfortable. Some people there generally just want to go back to work, you right. know, um, but, you know, the, the, it's, but the, the, the clowns and the old, over, a lot of clowns aren't there, you know, they get the more, you know, the majority of the attention, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can understand, man. Listen, man, we're, we're, you know, we're from Brockton. We've got a lot of boys who own barbershops. They, you know, they're hurting. Like, I feel them, man. Right. They're hurting. Hey, so right. I'm like, this is not a joke. I mean, it's easy for a reporter can, a reporter can talk about these protests. These reporters on TV are getting paid still. You know, I'm blessed. I'm, you know, I'm a film teacher. I'm still getting paid. So the checks are still coming in. I'm blessed. But, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to look down on someone, but I'm just saying, if you're going to do it, don't bring your AR-15. Like, really? <laughs> You don't need to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that's right, my beef right. with that. Yeah, uh, and we one of the other things we talked about last week was the man who wore the KKK hood into the grocery store. He will not Ooh. be charged with a with a hate crime, um, which we talked about in this show last week. It's not a hate crime. Is it distasteful? Yes. Is it ignorant? Yes. But is it violation of the law? No. He can absolutely do some stupid stuff like that as long as he doesn't commit a hate crime attached to it. So if this gentleman was to go and burn a cross on somebody's front lawn, he, then it would be considered a hate crime because he has that mask on. If he went and lynched somebody with that mask on, 
that mask would attach itself to a hate crime. But just simply wearing the KKK hood in the store is not a violation. And I thought that too. I said the same thing. I said I was disgusted. I was upset. But at the end of the day, it it's not breaking the law. So um, definitely wanted to get that out there. And again, the reason why we do have newbie on here is because we want to get into this discussion of what has happened down in Georgia. And, and to be honest, the news is coming at us like no tomorrow. Like the, the, this story is being updated. It's got twists. It's got turns. Um, when this first happened, we saw this video and we were wondering where this video came from. And one of the things I thought was like, this video has got to be connected to a third person. That was my right. assumption. And then it came out that, you know, that this lawyer, um, Alan uh, Brickman, he, he, he released this video because he said that he had a conscience because it was, it was killing his community. This whole story that was being kept quiet. And the only reason why it went nationwide is because this video was released. He said he wanted it to throw transparency on the case. Now, when you read into the story, you realize that the McMichaels, they did not retain him. Come to find out now with the latest news is that this lawyer was actually retained by Brian William, William Bryan, who was the person in the truck <clears throat> that videotaped this video. Now, uh, you know, I had a discussion off air with, with someone early about this, and it's it's a tough one because I feel like he was with them. He's saying that he wasn't with them. He wasn't connected to this. He says he was just randomly recording this. I find it be I find this to be two way co- coincidental for him to just be randomly taping this. I feel like the initial reports of him being behind them in case he was turn around and head back towards him to stop him. But the scary thing, and I don't want to, this is just my opinion before we get into this. Right. Is my opinion. I think that, that this case and this, what was happening here is scares me because, you know, down South, when you get down South, there's a lot of stories about a lot of young missing black men down south. Once you get down south, you hear these stories. Not, And this is not just in the 60s and 70s. This is now. We're talking now. There's a lot of young black men missing. And sometimes you wonder, would he have been one of these missing black men and someone has these videos, these so-called, I call them trophy videos of these guys doing what they did? You know, is this going to be something bigger? You don't know. This, this story could go so many ways and now they're trying to discredit Ahmad by saying he was in a he was in a house that was being constructed. Yes, they have a video. They're not sure if it's him, but he's dead, so they can't even ask him why he went in there. He could have went in there to take a piss break. He could have just been in there being nosy. He could have been in there looking for a job, but we don't know because he's dead. Right. Um, his actions that he did is not a felony, so they had no reason to chase him down and, and question him or stop him. But the other thing that popped up that really hit home was is the fact that the father, Greg McMichael, who was a police officer, he had history with Ahmad um, while he was in high school. He's had, he had a couple of incidents where, you know, it, it, it led to court actions and dismissals. And, and, um, and, and one time it ended up being probation. So there obviously was a history there. And for them to say that they didn't know who he was when he was jogging and they came face to face with him. That pretty much throws BS on their story now. So, again, right. I got newbie on here. I'm going to let you talk first on this, man. Well, here, here's what's going to happen. And, and I, I've been, you know, uh, fortunate or unfortunate, I guess, to interview a lot of mothers mm-hmm. who have lost mm-hmm. sons through, um, you know, through, uh, you know, unarmed black men being killed by police. And in this case, he's, you know, no longer a police officer, but, you know, still connected to law enforcement. So unfortunately, I've, I've I've seen their pain, and what happens a lot, Keith, is that what they're going to do, and you'll see it the next few weeks, they're mm-hmm. going to try to bring him down, bring down his character. They did it for mm-hmm. Trayvon Martin, they did it for Mike Brown, and let's just say he was not the best person. Well, let's just go worst case scenario. Let's just say worst case scenario, he was robbing those houses. Let's go there. Let's just go there. They don't have the right to chase him down and kill him. Right. The, the, the one doesn't relate to the other, you know, and they're going to try to fame his character and they're going to do it. And they're going to try hard doing it. So she's doing a court case, but the connection between chasing him down and killing him, that's a murder. And this is what I'm tired of seeing a lot of times on the news, having a lot of times to Trayvon Martin, they brought him back. A, you know, he was, he was, you know, he smelled like weed and this, this, that, and the other, that doesn't take away the fact that George Zimmerman chased him down and tried to kill him. You know, 
Mike Brown. Mike Brown did rob a store. He did rob a store in, in, in Ferguson. Now, okay, mm-hmm. that was a little sketchy about, you know, was Mike Brown reaching for the gun? But the whole point that that's, you know, they found the officer not guilty. But the point was they tried to say something before that of him robbing the store and to try to justify the killing. Now, some shootings are justified in these controversial ones. This one was a murder. It was clear as day. And, and the sad thing about it is we're going to see in the court case, they're going to try to bring down his character, maybe take down the character of his family to distract you from the actual murder. And that's what I'm afraid is going to happen. So we really got to pay attention. You know, uh, you know the, the arrest is something, but we need a conviction. It's a hate crime. And, you know, I, I, would, I, I would push for a death penalty, you know, for this situation if, he's, you know, if, if it's a first degree murder. Uh, which it looks like is as clear as day. So I, I just think it's very, it's, it's very we got to be very cautious with this. And again, you know, the, the police culture and law enforcement culture, it's gotten better, a lot better, um, particularly, I would say, in the Northeast area. And it's not perfect by any means, but there's still a culture of protecting our own, this fraternity culture of protecting each other. And that's why in New York... You know what they did was if there was a if there's an if there's an officer who kills an unarmed person, it's automatically taken out from the local um, authorities onto the state. That way, there's a separate pair of eyes look at it, hopefully an objective point of view. So let's see what happens, but we got to really pay attention to this and make sure they get this right. Yeah, I, and I agree with you because you know when I saw this DA who took over. He was pissed, but he was very careful with his words when he said, you know, this is still an open case. You know, he, he was letting people know that this is still an open case. There's, there's some people that could still be going down. I expect, in my opinion, I expect the female DA who blocked the first set of officers who wanted to arrest him and didn't allow it. I believe she's going to go down because of her connection yes, to absolutely. Greg McMichael to begin with. I think she should have. She should have reclused herself from the get-go because she had that connection. She didn't have been like, no, I can't. There's a conflict of interest. Somebody else needs to be brought on on this, and she didn't. She she tried to cover it up for him and his son, and um, it don't look good at all. And the fact that this took two months, you know, for them to even – like I said, like I feel like this. I feel like – I don't know about you, but I feel like if this tape never came to light, this would have just been another debated black man killed in the streets of Georgia. And, right. and we would have never have known exactly what it would have been, went down because it was he said, she said, and they would have put these people as a pillar of the community. And the reason why I point out, again, that this deals with this double standard we're talking about is just last week, NBA, <laughs> in NBA champion Shannon Brown, who lives in Georgia, same place, he was arrested after he sh- five rounds at somebody who came into his house. He just bought his house there. Somebody came into his house. They were uninvited. They, they, they might have been trying to rob his house. They don't know. But he did shoot at them. Nobody was injured. But they quickly, abruptly arrested him for firing five shots and didn't waste no time. Nobody was killed. Nobody was hurt. The people are saying right off the bat, double standard. Black guy go right to jail, gets arrested. And your thoughts on that? Because that's, that's you right know, there. Well, one thing I, well, you know, and, and I agree 100%, but one thing I've noticed you know, one silver lining, this, this COVID-19 thing is, is devastating. It, it really is. And, and one, one thing that I hope this country sees is the glaring, I mean, glaring gap between how minorities really struggle in every aspect, it seems like, of our system, whether it's criminal mm-hmm. justice, whether it's health care, whether it's politics. I mean, really, I mean, it, it's glaring, you know, that representation matters. Having someone represents you in the government, local, federal, and state government matters. Having mm-hmm. someone fighting for you politically for health care matters. Having, having an officer that, that looks like you're familiar with the community matters. It's so glaring now. If this doesn't w- make people wake up, and, and, and in a sense, we almost gave ourselves too much credit for electing Barack Obama. We kind of, I think we took our, our, pedal, our pedal off the gas a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. We gave ourselves a little too much credit for that. Um, and th- these are glaring battles now in 2020 that need to be fixed. You know, you know, officers protecting each other is is. I mean, th- this is if this is not a clear example of that, I don't know what is. You know, of protecting your own 
and, and those, those pictures of of uh, of of the uh, person who shot him with the actual with the governor of of, um, of Florida as well. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he has those some political connections there that clearly help. So again, we're talking about political connections, and again, this is why representation matters. This is why you got to go to the this is why you got to go to the ballot box and get people and get diverse candidates that represent you for things like this don't happen. You know, this is a this is a clear, glaring example of why you gotta go to the to the to the ballot box. You gotta you gotta you gotta you know you, you gotta look and know who your DA is. You know, look who you look who your, your state offices are and go from there. I mean I I think this is gonna be a real classic case and hopefully we can learn for it. It's keep it means nothing. It, it it means nothing if we don't learn from this. It don't mean a damn thing. Right. Be quite frank with you. It's a little depressing, honestly, because you know, you know, I, I spent three years doing a documentary on this. And it's depressing when this happens again. It's like, damn. It's like, wow. Mm. Like, like, you know, you're you're fighting for some, but this happens again. It's frustrating, you know. But we got, you know, we, we got to remain stay positive and and continue to fight because I think us this uproar, the social media uproar, is what got this done. So. In terms of that, we did make a big difference, I think, as a country to go forward. And one thing I want to say, Keith, you know, I'm, I don't want to be sure I'm going all over the place, but it's no, no, very no, you're important. Bro- you're good. You're good. No, you're on point. It's very important for, there's a lot of good white people out there. Actually, let me put it this way. Most white people are good people. Okay? Mm-hmm. Most white people are good people. They need to step up and fight on our behalf as well. So something like Tom Brady, when he did signing mm, um, yeah. with the players coalition, that's a, that's a big deal. You know, it's like Colin Kaepernick when he kneeled and it was a black issue, but when Howie Longsung kneeled with him, I forgot his name from Philadelphia. I'm blanking on his name. Mm-hmm, Howie mm-hmm. Longsung. Uh, yeah. Chris Long. When yeah. Chris Long kneeled, it, it, it brings, it, it, it brings, unfortunately it shouldn't, but it brings a little more credibility that everyone's fighting for the same thing. You know, that's not just all oh, the black guy fighting for the black issue, but if everyone's involved, okay, we got to really pay attention here. So it's important for, um, you know, white officers, white politicians to really step up on this issue. And it's not just us fighting because we can't do this on our own. We can't. True progress is made by everybody. Barack Obama wasn't elected by just black people. Okay, mm-hmm. only 12% of the country. There were some good yeah. white people out there that's helping out. And I, I think, you know, they got to step up um, and they can't be silent about it. A lot of them are silent about it. They're good people. Okay. They mean well, but a lot of them are silent about it. The officers are silent. You know, the good officers are silent about it. The good politicians, you know, are silent about these issues. They got to speak up a little more. Yeah, and I agree. I agree with you. And, I, you know, it's great because Tom Brady doing what he did, it does bring light to this. And to be honest, this COVID-19 and this happening during this time, so a lot of people are on their social media. A lot of people are in front of the TV. So a lot of people saw this Georgia thing. And I know there was a lot. I, I know a lot of the people that I was debating with over this double standard in Michigan, you know, and I, you know, and the point I was trying to make was that if that was a group of black men, it would have been a totally different issue. And, you know, it was a heated debate with a few people, you know, and then when this popped up, man, I tell you, newbie, crickets crickets from all the people who didn't we would wanted to debate this double standard because it was in their face everything that right. i had said everything that i was trying the points that i was trying to make was right there in their face in in color all over the internet boom and, and you couldn't explain it night to till this day people are still quiet because it's there and this is what we've been talking about this is what you was talking about this is why you put these things out there in your films that you put out and and these topics that you talk about and it and it is like I said it scares me because I I said in my opinion I feel that if this tape wasn't if this lawyer didn't release this to the to the TV station and radio station it would have never have gotten out there and I I think it was just a, I think it was a trophy like I said Williams Bryan is saying that he's not connected to this in any way whatsoever my feeling is he was but I think he flipped I think he's flipped. I think he don't want to go to jail, and I think this guy here is 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 attorney. It, you know, I, I just think this is this is it. This is this is what we need. It's sad that Ahmad lost his life at twenty five, 
But right. at the same time, I think people really need to see this because this this could be the this could be the changing point. I mean, look, <laughs> I've been I've been saying it. I'm a religious man, and I've been saying it. We've already got the signs. We got COVID. That's a plague. We've got the murder hornets. That's another plague. What else is coming <laughs> at us to let us know that Jesus may be coming? This this is it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this might be it. <laughs> the world is the world. The, the world froze. The world is. I mean, we're frozen right now. Yeah, man. It's it's it might be. This might be time for people to start checking up on their uh, on their religion and, and getting right. <laughs> this, he might be coming. <laughs> You know, my grandmother used to talk about it all the time. You want to be right when he comes. You don't want to be slacking. Yeah. <laughs> I remember my grandmother telling me that. You don't want to be slacking. You want to be ready when he comes because he's only going yeah, to take so I'm, many people I'm, with him. <laughs> it's scary, man. So, you know, it's scary. You know, so it's humbling, too. You know, <clears throat> yes, you find, out yes. what, you find out what's really important. Yes. So your thoughts on this? I mean, how would, if you were to do some filming, how would you approach this hot topic if you were to go down there and shoot stuff? I, I want to see how Newbie Rito and Newbie Productions would go down there and handle this if you wanted to make something about this. What would you do? How, walk us through the process. I, I, I think people would be kind of interested in that because you're, you're an Emmy Award winning guy for your last film. So we want to know what well, you would do. Well, one thing I always do before I do any documentary, like, you know, there the, was, the result, the result is an unarmed black man got killed. That, that's what happened. That's the news. I always say, let's back it up. Okay, let's, let's, let's back it up and find out what are, what are some symptoms that happen. Now, we're just focused on the sickness. What's the symptoms? So, you know, if I'm going out there, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to people, older people, and I want to know how was, what was the city? Is it Brunswick, Georgia? Mm-hmm. Yes, the, yes. Okay. I want to. I want to know how the culture was in in, in that place. I want to talk to people. I want to know what was the what was the culture like. I want to talk to some older folks and find out the culture that brought this forward. Okay. I want to talk about relationships that the DA had. So whenever I do a documentary, you know, this is what this is what's going on. Cool. I'm going to back it up two three steps. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to walk this back and see how we got there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all sides. I'm going to get the side of the officer. Okay, I'm going to get the side of, you know, the mother or family, what have you, you know, find out the person. Because first what we got to do, even the, quote, you know, the murderer, mm-hmm. I want to humanize him, find out what type of person he was, good or bad. Just find out what type of person he is. Right. Same right. thing the victim. Right. Find out what type of person they are. So, boom, so we can identify their personality, see what, that, see what type of person they are see if they have hate in their heart for both sides. So now we got, we're humanizing both people, the murderer and the victim. Mm-hmm. We're backing it up to find out what type of culture was in that community beforehand. Okay. And then we're getting different perspectives from law enforcement, community and what have you. So now it's almost like cooking, you know? So you got the, you got the past, put the past in the pot, put the, put the personality of the murderer in the pot, put the personality of the victim in the pot. Now take on different perspectives. You put that all in, now you got yourself a story. You know, that, that's kind of attack every documentary. I kinda I want to back it up first. You know, <clears> kind of <throat> similar to um, you know, the last dance. Like one thing I like what they're doing is the 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 focus is on the ninety eight championship season, but they backed it up. Okay, what you know, why was that season so important? Let's back it up a little bit, tell the story. So mm-hmm. that's how it attacks the issue. <clears throat> wow! Damn, giving us a little insight on how to win an Emmy. <laughs> a little insight, a little insight. That, that, that one's for free. <laughs> a, little, a little inside. That was good. That was. Great. I got people in the chat. Frank Zanowski saying, "Yep, love newbie." Everybody's out here, and, and, and that just gives us a little inside. So you know, this is really nice to have you on. And like when I thought about who could I have on to discuss this with me, I'm like, it's got to be newbie. It can't be anybody else. It's got to be Newbie Rateau. It, it has to be. This dude's been touching base on this topic for the longest time. You know, we've talked about this, and we've talked about this in sports. We've talked about all this racial disparity stuff and had great conversations, you know. So definitely something to, to really talk about. And so, I mean, one, at the end of the – yep, go ahead. No, one thing I do want to mention in terms of documentary work for people who are listening, what's really important is – more than that, all that is trust. So whether I'm talking to the person who killed somebody and I've talked to people who've done bad things and I've talked to people who've gone through horrible things, 
they got to be able to trust you or they ain't going to tell you nothing. Mm. So that, 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 so even before mm. I'm getting the backstory, I'm calling and I'm, I'm I just generally want to talk to them as a person, no matter whether I think they're a horrible person or not. I, I got to develop that trust for the murderer and for the, and, and for the victim's family, mm. you know, I got to develop that trust, you know? So, you know, for the victim's family, you know, talk to the victim's family and find out about, you know, his or her personality, the murder and find out about, you know, his or her personality and develop that trust that, you know, no matter what, I'm going to tell the story in the right way. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, hide anything and the viewers can decide on who's right, who's wrong. And everybody kind of wants their story told, you know, because they feel they might get something out of it or get themselves redeemed or whatever. Everybody wants that story told. So you're right. Yeah. You got to get that trust and then go from there. Tragic, tragic. So um, you want to hang on with me and talk sports for a little bit before you get out of here? Yeah, I, I hang on for a sports segment, then, then, then I'll get out of here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to jump over the entertainment booth. I'll go to the entertainment booth after newbie heads out, but we're going to get into the sports booth. So in the sports booth, real quick, last weekend, um, UFC 249 took place in Florida. <clears throat> Dave actually got fights tonight also. Um, he's trying to catch up. Dana White is trying to catch up. He's throwing three fights in one week, and that puts him kind of back on track for 2020. No fans in the in the building, so it's almost like watching an episode of The Ultimate Fighter. One of the things that people got by watching this UFC 249 that everybody liked is the fact they were able to hear the conversation going on and, and kind of the trash talking between the fighters. They were really paying attention to what the coaches and other people was giving them for for um you know technical hints or whatever so as you've seen on 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 saturday night francis nagano he killed his opponent in 20 seconds now usually the crowd erupts and all this stuff but this one here you were able to hear francis nagano's left left oh my god it was a left punch he knocked the crap out of his opponent in 20 seconds you could hear it hear it um Dan Cormier is responsible for giving. We we had a, a local guy here, um, Jorgen DeCastro. He was fighting Hardy, who's a NFL fighter. He, he he's an MMA fighter who used to play in the NFL for the Dallas Cowboys. Greg Hardy, um, Jorgen yep. DeCastro was giving him kicks to you know he was giving these leg kicks to his legs, and Dan Cormier kind of instructed Hardy what to do. Um, and he ended up getting the victory unanimous decision, but Jorgen De Castro actually hit his foot during those strikes. Um, Bethuan native Calvin Qatar defeated Jeremy Stevens in the second round by KO'd him with elbows. I'm not talking elbows, I'm talking about elbows, and you could hear uh, he won in impressive, impressive fashion. So we want to make sure to give our props to these guys. Um, 249 lived up to it. Lightweight champs and Tony Ferguson took on Justin Gaeth in a brawl after Ferguson got a friggin' orbital eye shattered. So the fight was actually stopped. He actually looked at the ref and just shook his head to let the ref know that he was done. So great fights, good fights. A lot of fans probably picked up the, the UFC now. They, I, I'm pretty sure they got a lot of new fans. I'm, I'm pretty sure they got a lot of fans. Um, Robert Kraft is auctioning off his Super Bowl ring. For, for the all-in charity, which you saw, Tom Brady they actually put a thing out there where you're going to do a meet and greet, you have dinner and stuff, and I think you get a ticket to one of the games in Tampa Bay. But now Robert Kraft is auctioning off his Super Bowl 51. Um, it started out, I think it was like 75000 was the opening bid, but it's up to like 350000 now, so I don't have that type of cash. Also, the NFL released the 2020 schedule. Patriots having one of the toughest schedules in a long time. I predicted the Patriots to go nine and seven, but it's a very, very cautious nine and seven. The only reason why I think the Pats can go nine and seven is because during this COVID-19, we haven't had any of the mini camps and pre camps and rookie camps that we usually get from April to when they get to June for the two days in June and July. So, all of that has been wasted. So right now, the onus of being in game shape is on the player. And I can tell you right now, 100% of NFL players are not taking his time and utilizing it like Alex Smith 
of of the Redskins is utilizing this time. I've seen some videos of guys working out; they're staying in game shape. But I'm sure not. I'm sure there's a percentage of guys that aren't staying in game shape, and it's going to show when when the season does kick off, if it does kick off. Um, I got the Patriots, like I said, I got them at nine and seven, and and I'm like I said, I'm I'm a leery nine and seven on this one. I think I think one of the games that I got them losing. I mean, one of the games I got them winning, which is against the Chargers, that defense is tough. So that game could go either way. But I definitely got them losing to the Ravens. I got them losing to the Chiefs. I got them splitting with Miami. I got them splitting with the Bills. But I got them sweeping the – I got them um, beating the Jets. But other than that, I'm going to let Newby get in here what his thoughts are. But like I said, I'm I'm going with 9-7. and Yeah, I think that's um, I think that's a solid pick. I think Bill Belichick will probably go coach of the year because uh, Bill. This is where Bill. Um, this is where Bill. I, I think Bill secretly likes this type of stuff where, you know, it's 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 kind of his team again. Tom Brady's not there. Um, it's a lot of young players. You know, you got a few veterans on the defense side of the ball, McCordy and everything. But this mm-hmm. is kind of his team, complete control. So, you know, I I, I think coach like Bill Belichick. And um, I, I've seen a little bit of I, – I used to enter for the Patriots for uh, for uh, for a few months. And then I used to always see Belichick uh, doing training camp. I see some of his press conferences. He really loves training camp because mm-hmm. he has the ultimate power. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, he's bringing up players. You know, you're not sure who's going to be cut. A lot of players are on edge. And he enjoys that. You know, he, he enjoys the, the coaching part of it. So – it's kind of like he's reborn a little bit, you know, without Tom Brady. You know, that's a big loss, obviously, a Hall of Famer and everything. But mm-hmm, he has mm-hmm. a chance to mold. He has a chance to mold Stidham um, to a quarterback that he wants to be. So, listen, the division sucks. So, you know, <laughs> Buffalo is going to be you know, Buffalo is going to be okay. But everyone else, I think, stinks. You know, Miami will be a little bit better, but not much. The Jets will be awful. So, they should, you know, they sh- probably should go, you know, five and three in the division. You know, so you got five mm-hmm. wins right there, and then you guys get four of the wins somewhere else. So I think that you know that nine and seven, ten and six is is very doable. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, get in the playoffs and see what happens. My feeling in this one too, I'm playing conspiracy theory theory here. I I, I think look, I think that Belichick is looking ahead to 2021 draft, and I think he's he's got his sights set on Trevor Lawrence. I feel like he's going to go with Stidham. And he's going to say, look, let's just give him the ball. If he tanks, we we toss it up and say, hey, we gave the kid a chance. He stunk. Let's make it up in the draft. And then they're going to get Trevor Lawrence. I think I have a feeling this is where he's going, where he's going. I think he really doesn't care about this season. He's going to build his team. you got Nikhil Harry who started to come around. Nikhil Harry came in week eight, and he made a difference for Tom Brady on that field. Um, I, I think you're going to see this team. Nine and seven, they'll miss the playoffs. And then with all those draft picks they got in this rap, this draft pick, he's going to utilize them. He may shock the world to move up. And I'm going to keep saying this until it happens. I think it's Trevor Lawrence in 2021 to the Patriots. I mean, I wouldn't surprise me. I, I think Bill Blacks is such a good coach. He's going to run into a couple wins. I mean, mm-hmm. just, just, but just by accident, I mean, they're, they're going to be so well prepared. And the, the, the mixture between Belichick being the greatest coach in the game and them being the worst division in the game, I think by default they're a playoff team with nine wins, nine, ten wins. So mm. that might be completely wrong, but I, I do think they got some talent. I mean, I want to see what they got to have with, you know, with, with the receiver core. Um, I think Mohamed Sanu is a lot better than he was in the playoffs. I really think he was injured, you know, between that mm-hmm. last game in mm-hmm. the playoffs and the last few weeks. I thought he was injured. So, you know, they got some weapons defensively. You know, we'll, we'll see. Um I mean, I'm not. I don't think I should expect much from that corner, but you never know. Uh, I think defensively, this should be on. They should be relatively solid still. I mean, that was their strong point last year. You know, they still got pretty good secondary with Gilmore, McCourty. Um, so the linebacker was a little, a little older with Hightower. I like to see that right. inside linebacker in there. But I think they'll be solid. You know, and Belichick with his scheming, I think they'll be a good defensive team. Yeah, it should be it should be a good team. Like I said, I'm I'm gonna give them a nine and seven, and we'll we'll see from there. But um, hey, noob, it was great having you on the show tonight, man. Um, give you social media and everything so people can find you. Your film is actually on 
Tubi. I actually that's where I watched. I watched it on Tubi. Mm. Um, so if you guys can get on there, I don't know if it's Tubi or Tubby, but <laughs> that's yeah, where I, I call it Tubi. Yeah, yeah, and that's where I watched it. So if anybody hasn't seen Newbie's film, it's on Tubi. I'll let him talk about another. Yeah, yeah, I'll let him talk about you know the title and everything, so we can get this out there properly. Yeah, best way to watch a film, Tubi TV. Just type in my name, Newbie. N-O-U-B-E, the film will pop up. Actually, the last two, the Out of Bounds documentary I did on sports and then the mm-hmm. police documentary, all for free. Um, <clears throat> you get on Amazon Prime. If you have Prime, it's, it's, it's on there as well. Or you can go into my website, Newbie Productions, N-O-U-B-E Productions.com. Instagram, Newbie, N-O-U-B-E Video. Um, that's my Instagram. Twitter, Newbie Video, N-O-U-B-E Video. Um, so I'm not hard to find. There's not too many newbies out there in the world. Shout out to uh, my co-director, William Madero. And shout out to my students over at Lynn Tech. You know, I love them to death. I miss them. So. And shout out to Class of 2020. And nice. shout out to you, Keith. Appreciate you, brother. <clears throat> no, no problem. And hey, who you like if the NBA comes back? What do you think, real quick, before you get out? Um, I'm going to uh, go with the Celtics and Lakers. Yeah, I think that's a nice way that uh, – take down an interrupted season. So let's see. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, you got to have it. And then look, and, and real quick, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, Kyrie challenging Kimber Walker on IG for one-on-one. This dude, he's salty. He's salty. He left. He, he realizes he made it. He's like that girlfriend that walks away and then realizes that the grass isn't greener. Now you're trying to stay yeah. relevant in Boston news. <laughs> Yo, listen, I think Kyrie one-on-one could beat almost anybody. But it was, you know, in the end, the NBA is not a one-on-one game. So, one-on-one, I like Kyrie. But, you know, Kemba, you know, I take Kemba on the Celtics of the week. But one-on-one, Kyrie's sick. His handles are nuts, you know. Well, we'll see. Like I said, he's looking for it to happen on IG. Um, there's been no response from the Walker camp yet. So, we'll see what happens. But, again, newbie, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. All right. Appreciate you, brother. Okay, man. All right. Take care. Peace. All right. Stay stay safe. All right. Peace. All right. That was Newbie Ruto hanging out with us. Good stuff. Um, Let me jump back into the entertainment news. We got about 15 minutes left to the show. Uh, Entertainment booth. Man. Wow. It was a dark, dark weekend in entertainment. Like, Like, this was one of the darkest weekends in entertainment history as we know it and, and it just hit on all sides you know we lost a uh, great r&b singer and, and betty wright we lost the queen of rock and roll little richard i mean classics hits upon hits upon hits innovators and 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 then we lost music executive andre harrell for a lot of people if you don't know who andre harrell was andre harrell is an, is a music executive who was responsible for the careers. He he pretty much led. He's the put it this way. Andre Harrell is the guy who took a young Sean Combs out of college and pretty much led Sean Combs and and I forget who else it was with Sean Combs to bring talent over. And what they did with Mary J. Blige and and what they did with all those people coming up on Bad Boy. Andre Harrell was responsible for that whole that whole genre of music coming out, that whole bad boy flavor, that whole New York in your face music. Mary J, when Mary J hit the scene, it was it was just sheer craziness. Um, the writing that was involved with that label was just sheer craziness. Um, so he lost his like a great comedic talent. We lost a great, great, great comedic talent over the weekend. Actually, it was Monday morning. We lost Jerry Stiller, Ben Stiller's dad. Look, I'm a young... I, when I was younger, I remember seeing Jerry Stiller and his wife, um, Ann Mirror. And, and they were one of the first real acting couples. You know what I'm saying? So when you watch TV, you, you, had, you, had, you had Lucy and her husband, Ricky, they were the you know a real married couple, but you know, Ann Mara and 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 Jerry Stiller. I remember them coming up. They used to do. They would never separate. They were always together in whatever they were in. They were always together in whatever they were in, and you knew this. And his timing, his comedic timing was crazy. 
And then she passed away, but he moved on. He was on Seinfeld. He was in all types of movies right up until the time he's passed. And and my prayers and blessings go out to all of these great achievers who uh, passed away. And also, oh, I can't forget, I can't forget uh, Mary Pratt passed away, 102 years old. For those who don't know who Mary Pratt is, if you were younger, you actually saw the movie A League of Their Own with the uh, all-women's team. When all the men went off to war, women decided to play professional baseball, and they made this movie A League of Their Own. You know, there's no crying in baseball. Remember that? Well, Mary Pratt was actually the pitcher for the Rockford Peaches. She passed away 102 years old. Now, for, one of the things I do have to mention is that all of these deaths, not one was connected to COVID-19. These were all of, of natural causes. Um, Little Richard had bone cancer. Andre Harrell uh, was heart disease. Uh, so all these deaths um, were not related to COVID-19. Ben Stiller was, was his, um, Jerry Stiller um, was just, they said was natural causes. So um, again, before anybody goes out and thinks and says, oh, COVID-19, no, 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 no. It wasn't COVID-19. These, all these people passed away from other issues. So again, prayers, blessings, go out to all of those that we lost. And um, it just was a crazy weekend. I, I believe the second lead singer for Bad Company also passed away. I, it, it, he's not much of a legend. He he took over after the major singer for Bad Company had left the group, but uh, I believe he he passed away. And then there was a, a country music writer. Um, and I forget his name, and I apologize, but I believe it was a country music writer who also passed away this weekend. So um, if you tuned in this past weekend, Miss Erica Badu took on Jill Scott on Versus, broke the record, had over 700,000 viewers. For those who tuned in and thought you were going to get a hit-for-hit hit battle, 20 rounds. Nope, you didn't get that. You didn't get that at all. What you got, <laughs> look, if you smoke, if you drink, this was the weekend to hang out with the ladies, smoke and drink and just vibe. Uh, both ladies played some of their best hits while some of them, you know, while, I, I, like, there was one part where Erica Badu put on one of her joints and she started giving, like, the background of, what inspired her to write the song and where the word, you know, the lyrics came from. And when she put it on, Jill Scott just started singing the song because Jill Scott is such a fan. And they talked about it. They talked about this battle. They talked about how people were going to tune in and hoping they were going to see them talk about each other badly and, and, and whatever. Um, they came out. It was just a, a great vibe session. It was great stuff. And it looks like the next battle the next battle is going to be Nelly taking on Ludacris. Now, look. Man, that's that South against that St. Louis. That's that dirty South against St. Louis. Now, if you got to talk hits and if you guys are all in the chat and still listening, I, I, I think Luda takes this. I think Luda takes this. I think Luda has a ton of hits. Nelly's got a lot of features. Nelly was on a lot of other tracks with other people. But I think if you're going hit for hit, Luda's got some under-the-radar joints that just, they just hit home, people. They hit home. And I don't think that, that, that I don't think Nelly can hang with that when you get to the last final five. I think, I think Nelly takes it. So, let me know what you think. If you're in the chat, if you're listening to this show, this podcast before next Saturday, who do you like? Do you like Nelly or do you like Luda? We're gonna we're gonna let you know. It's gonna be on versus. These two are gonna go at it and let's see what happens. Uh CGI virtual influencer Michaela signed an exclusive deal with creator artist in agency just one month after cutting the pay of employees due to COVID-19 epidemic. Why is this crazy? Because she is a CGI virtual influencer she's like the max head from of the 2020s while well, we've got starving artists out here trying to make a living we've got contracts going to virtual reality cgi characters locked down a contract it's craziness so i thought that was a funny mention um 
real quick, just weeks after going after Universal Studios for releasing Trolls on video on demand and making a ton of money, it looks like Amazon is ready to acquire AMC Theaters. If AMC Theaters is picked up by Amazon, this is going to be crazy for Amazon because Amazon has already got a toehold on cable television with their own streaming network with Amazon Prime. If they pick up the movie theater market, man, get ready. There are And look, Amazon is already getting ready to jump into the gaming realm. And I, I'm very scared of this. I think I think Amazon coming into the gaming realm is is crazy. I, you know, they've opened up some game studios. They actually had a game at the uh, it was the event before the E3. I think it was the CES of this year. Amazon actually showed a game that their studio was working on. Looks very impressive. Very impressive. So we'll see what happens here. Getting into the Trump troubles booth. Um, 1900 former DOJ officials want. Attorney General William Barr to resign over improper invent, intervention in the criminal case of the former Trump National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who recently had his charges dropped by the DOJ. Flynn had actually pled guilty twice, pled guilty twice, remember that, people, to lying to the FBI about his Russian contacts during the presidential transition, which is now turned into this whole breaking news big thing about Obama creating this Russian narrative to smear Trump. Um, so all the Trump Americans are all over this one. They're all ready to go after Obama. And they, a lot of people don't realize that this is just simply deflection from the COVID numbers that he's been getting hammered about. And, you know, he got hammered last night and he walked off in a tizzy, all upset, took his ball and went home. We'll see. It, it's going to be real, real interesting. Also, President Trump is under fire for relinquishing. Um. Well, actually, he's not under fire. I, I'm going to stick up for him on this one. He he relinquished overseeing his properties when he became president. But people are upset because um, the Twitter page for his Trump properties was promoting coming out to the golf course in California and coming out and playing and this and that. And then T- President Trump went and he retweeted the tweet from the Trump golf course. And he said, it's nice to see things back. And a lot of people were like, Oh, you know, this is, there's people dying and you're promoting. I get it. You can be upset about it. But at the end of the day, it was his, it was the company that runs his businesses that put that out there. He was just sharing it. Is it unethical for him to do that? Is a violation of ethics for him to tweet that on his presidential Twitter account? I think it is. I think in my opinion, I think it's wrong for him to do that. I think it is. I think it. I think it's kind of classless. But again, it's no different than what we've seen in the four years that he's been here. So it shouldn't surprise anybody that he did something like that. Um, also, COVID nineteen has definitely hit the White House, as we have eleven Secret Service members, Mike Pence assistant, and President Trump's valet, all tested positive for COVID. If you've been watching the press conferences for the last two or three days, you've noticed now that everybody in the White House now is is wearing masks. Um, they kind of came at Kaylee McVeigh today about not wearing her mask. And she said it was unprofessional if she was to wear a mask while trying to sit up there. Look, I get it, too. They're doing it here with Baker and they complain about him not wearing a mask. It's like, you're not going to hear him. He's going to be all muffled. How would you like me to do the show for one hour with a mask going to something like this? It would be idiotic. So, again, I understand why she said that she gets tested daily. Uh, she was negative for two days in a row. But I'm pretty sure anybody who's in that White House right now. It's not looking good, so probably getting tested daily. Um, other than that, let me see where we're at, people, because I think we're getting – yeah, we're at 759. Um, before we get out of here, real quick, Viana Marie's V is available on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. Big ups to Viana Marie. She's just been verified as an artist on iTunes, so we've been seeing those statistics and who's been listening to her music. So if you can get a chance, if you're sitting home, you're looking for something to play, jump on V. Give it a listen. Give it some likes. And um, also, I'm going to be getting the clean version out to her distributor so we can have the clean version so people will be able to listen to it. Unfortunately, Paper Chase, which is one of the favorites, is not going to be on there on the clean version. I actually tried to edit (laughs) the Paper Chase, and guess what? There's no way you can clean that song up. So that will be considered now a bonus track on the original Uncensored EP. Um, actually, me, myself, and Viana Marie are going to try and kick off some trivia again 
this Saturday night. We were supposed to do trivia two weeks ago, but uh, Kitten <laughs> Kittens actually interrupted that. Cat uh, had kittens that weekend, so it was like 20 minutes before we go live when the cat come out. and Yeah, it was pretty crazy. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I got to thank my guest, Newbie Rateau, for coming on, talking about this thing in Georgia. I want to make sure you guys tune in next week. And for those of you who hung out and listened with us on Restream, thank you. Like, I just wanted to test this, see how it works out, and go from there. But I got to say something right now. SpongeBob, do me a favor and take me home. Well, see you next Tuesday. Thank you for listening to The Booth on Hoobazoo and HatcherRadio.com. Please follow the Facebook page and subscribe to the podcast at Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. The Booth is a Sinister One production hosted by Sinister One. I've got to start hanging out with friends that are a little more intelligent and understand politics and stuff. It's just that I'm up on this level up here, and all my friends are down here. Me, nah. You guys, nah. Maybe a little more down, down in here. Screw you guys, I'm going home. I smoke, I drink, I do my thing. These bitches hating, so you know I got to make it plain. Don't do cocaine with your chick, my main. We stick together, true forever, yeah, you know we bang. I miss those days, which was easy. If only I made it, no repeat. Now that I done upgraded, I've been upstate and y'all think I'm playing. And I gotta hit now for these weak ass hoes who think I ain't slaying. Try me, try me, and I'll probably end up laughing cause I never back down. I'm that chick with a clean ass whip. I don't need that shit, it's like I'm on now. I get home and I get tired of fuss and fighting, guess I gotta crack down. Don't mess with me, cause on everything, I'ma have to bring the whole city out. W-H-O-O-B-A-Z-O-O, that's who was it, I come. W-H-O-B-A-Z-O-O, that's who was it, I come.